later hair you spit. Shining hair. That's what every girl wants. And that's the way your hair will be when you use Fitch's new cream shampoo. Fitch's cream shampoo leaves your hair dreamy soft like moonlight. Shining like bright starlight. That's because this marvelous new shampoo is made with two beneficial beauty aids. Lanolin and olive oil. Lanolin is used to soften the hair, to give it a brand new look. Olive oil is used to bring out sparkling highlights. To leave your hair gleaming and lustrous. And girls, you'll find Fitch's cream shampoo delightfully easy to use. Just a small dab whips into heaps of lather to thoroughly cleanse your hair and scalp. To rinse, just a swish of plain water and every bubble of suds is gone. Then see how soft and bright, how gloriously right this amazing shampoo leaves your hair. It looks as though it had been brushed and brushed and brushed. Fitch's cream shampoo is thrifty, too. Compare the size of the jar, compare its low cost, and buy it at drug or toilet goods counters. That's Fitch's cream shampoo, made with lanolin and olive oil for softer, shinier hair. The F.W. Fitch Company, makers of Fitch Shampoo, presents the Fitch Bandwagon, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Janine Roos, Anne Whitfield, Robert North, Walter Sharp and his music, and starring Alice Faye and Bill Harris. As we look into the Harris home, it is 12 o'clock noon. Phil is still asleep, and Alice is downstairs talking to her brother, William. Twelve o'clock noon, and Philip is still sleeping. Alice, why do you let him sleep so late? But he's tired, William. He and his band played at a dance last night, and they got home very late. He was so groggy when he got in, he didn't know what he was doing. Why, what happened? He came in half asleep, sat on the edge of the bed, took off one shoe and one sock, and then sat there for a half hour staring at his feet. Staring at his feet? Yes. Finally, he turned to me and said, Hey, Alice, am I going to bed or am I just getting up? <laughs> now, you know, Phil's been working too hard lately. All he thinks about is his band and his musicians. It's gotten so he hasn't taken me out once in the last three months. Why not? I don't belong to the union and Patrilla won't allow it. <laughs> oh, I wish Phil wouldn't work so hard. Mommy? the dog? We're playing dog sled, and we want to hitch Lieutenant Donahue up to our cart. Oh, I meant to tell you, children, Lieutenant Donahue didn't feel well this morning, and I took him over to the veterinarian. What's wrong with him, Mommy? Well, I don't know yet, but the doctor's going to call me later and let me know. Now, run along and play, girl, huh? Alice, just what's bothering you about Philip? Well, he's, he's so preoccupied, he, he doesn't know what he's saying half the time. His mind is always with that band of his. Uh-oh, uh-oh, here he comes now. <laughs> good morning, Phil. I gotta get a new sax player. Aren't you gonna kiss me good morning, Phil? <laughs> I gotta enlarge that fiddle section. Bill Harris, I'm talking to you. Oh, uh, pardon me. Uh, what did you say, miss? <laughs> I'm your wife, remember? And I'm standing here with my lips puckered up. Doesn't that mean anything to you? Oh, yeah, I gotta get a new trumpet player, too. <laughs> Phil, aren't you going to kiss me good morning? Oh, sure. Kiss you. Certainly am. I was just thinking about the band. Hey, come here, honey, and I'll give you a great big... Good morning, Philip. <laughs> it's about time you got up. You should be ashamed wasting such a glorious day. Time is too precious to be wasted. Every minute should be devoted to accomplishing something. Look, Portia, go out and face life someplace else, will you? <laughs> Philip, Philip, I'm here on business. I I've been going over the books, and I find you're overpaying the musicians in your band. They're not worth what you're giving them. Get lost, Ledger Head. Get lost. <laughs> I haven't had a cup of coffee yet, and you ain't paying. You pay too much, paying too much. I gotta pay my boys a lot. After all, I got the best musicians in the country. Those are the best. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> not you too, Brutus. Just wait a minute. 
After all, now, you ain't trying to say that my musicians ain't no good. Well, that ain't the only thing they ain't. <laughs> <laughs> well, even, even you must admit that your band is, shall we say, loud? They ain't so loud. Then how come all your girl vocalists wind up with punctured eardrums? <laughs> oh, Alice, why don't you stop exaggerating? You used to sing with my band, and it didn't affect you any, did it? Eh? <laughs> Exaggerating. Gee whiz. Oh, Phil. Oh, you just keep picking on my band, that's all. Why don't no. you leave me alone? No, no, I'm not only picking on it because, because of what it... I, I'm only picking on it because of what it's doing to you. You're working too hard. You don't look well lately. What are you talking about? I never looked better in my life. And, baby, that's hard to top. <laughs> you, you don't look well, Philip. And it's because you don't lead a healthy, normal life like I do. I don't smoke, drink, or run around. I'm in bed every night at 9 o'clock. And at 6 o'clock the next morning, I get up. What for? <laughs> to fill your fountain pen or something? <laughs> Look, will you guys leave me alone? There's nothing wrong with me. Oh, I think there is, Phil. You're very irritable lately. Do me a favor. Go to the doctor and have a basal metabolism. There's nothing wrong with my metabolism. It's as basal as anybody's, even basler. Oh, now, look, a checkup won't do any harm. Please do it for my sake. All right, all right. Metabolism, metabolism. I knew I was going to miss that. <laughs> I'll go just to prove it to you that I am in perfect shape. I'll go. I'll go down and see Dr. Emmerman. But if I'm going to go, I better go now because i got a band rehearsal later this afternoon. Well, you go ahead, Phil. I'll call the doctor and tell him you're coming right down. Okay. And look, Alice, call Frankie and tell him to pick me up at the doc's office. So long, honey. So long, dear. Goodbye, Philip. <laughs> Even through the door, I can hear that guy. I don't know what they're worrying about. I never felt better in my life. Nothing ever bothers me. I don't worry. I got a system. If your temper's getting the top hand, all you got to do is just stop and pass that piece by bury that hand. You like the duck sauce, chicken sauce, chattahoochee, chip a walk, do. If you're feeling mad as a wet hand, mad as you can possibly get, then pass that piece by bury that Tommy off like the Chia Mex, Cherokee, Shabula Mex, too. little restraint. Hold that hanky and wipe off all that war pain. And if you find yourself in a fury, be your own judge and your own jury. Pass that beef pipe and bury that hatchet like the duck or chicken or Chattahoochee Chippewa do. If you want to hover out west too, you will soon discover it's best to pass that beef pipe and bury that hatchet like the toad. Chango, Chattanooga, Chico, do. Even in colonial days, you knew the ceremonial ways to pass that peace pipe and bury that tomahawk like the Chicago Beast, Chippa, Chicago Beast, too. Oh, you're real, dear. Try to use a little control. When all clears, then you'll be top man on the totem pole. So if you want to be an all right guy, not a long face through to the night sky, right that apology and dispatch it. When you call it grand to pass, pass that tea slice and bury that hatchet. Like the chalk sauce, chicken sauce, chatter, hoochie, chip a boy. Those who see your next Cherokee, you move the back. Those who do the meat, chip a chest and chick a piece. Cho, cho, chango, chatter, look at chicken rolls, do. Now, was it Philip has left for the doctor? Do you really think there's anything wrong with him? Oh, no, no. It's just that I don't want him to work so hard. I hope the doctor tells him something to slow him down. Why take any chances? Why don't you call the doctor and suggest that he throw a little scare into Philip? It's the only way you'll ever get him to take it easy. Well, you may be right. I'll call the doctor and ask him to do it. I'll also call Frankie and tell him to do the same thing. <laughs> Oh, Dr. 
Doctor, Mrs. Harris just called. Her husband, Phil, is on his way down for checkup. You mean old Curly Top? <laughs> What's he want to check up for? All he's concerned about is his beautiful, wavy hair. <laughs> is he really that conceited about his hair? Is he? I'll never forget the last time he was here. Before I could listen to his heart, I had to remove the rag curlers from the hair on his chest. <laughs> Harris wants you to throw a little scare into him, Doctor. He's been working too hard, and she feels you're the only one who can get him to slow down. You know, this could be fun. I could scare him with a few long medical terms. Let's see, now, what can I tell him he has? Um, oh, why don't you tell him he has rhinoids and a cephalalgia? The nurse, I can't tell him that. Why not? I can't pronounce it. <laughs> what does it mean? It's a simple headache. Of course, I'll give it to me. Very well, I'll tell him. <laughs> I'll tell him he has, uh, what's that word again? <laughs> Rhinogenous cephalalgia. Oh, yeah, sure. Oh, doctor, someone just came into the reception room. That must be Harris now. I'll go out and see him. Hiya, Doc. Good morning, Mr. Harris. How do you feel? Great, great. How do you feel? Not bad. You, uh, you don't look so good. <laughs> I don't? No, you're, uh, you're a little pale. Uh, what's the matter? My stomach's been bothering me a little later. <laughs> well, look, don't eat so much. Drink a lot of water and get plenty of fresh air. That'll be five dollars, please. <laughs> Thank you, doctor. I, wait a minute. I'm not doctor around here. You want to check up? Let's get started. Open your shirt. Okay. Well, I've never seen anything like this before. <laughs> What's wrong? You're the first patient I've ever seen with ham hocks tattooed on his chest. <laughs> yeah, and in color, too. <laughs> Let's take a deep breath while I listen with my stethoscope. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh. How am I, Doc? Uh, Mr. Harris. Yeah? Would you mind paying me advance for this visit? <laughs> Wait a minute, Doc. There's nothing wrong with me. Is there? <laughs> well, I hate to tell you this, Mr. Harris, but you have a severe case of... Excuse me, ma'am. <laughs> Rhinogenous cephalalgia. <laughs> what the heck you got in that back room, Doc? <laughs> What did you say I have? I said you have a severe case of rhinogenous cephalalgia. Oh, that. Well, that's nothing to worry about. I'll just go home and sprinkle some malbin on my crudelbine. <laughs> What's a crudelbine? You worry with it. I'm still working on rhinoceros. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Harris, uh, I don't want to frighten you, but you're a sick man. Yeah? Yeah. In addition to what I just said, you have an acute case of Dawson Rotundum, and you're in the advanced stages of Sideriasis Capitis. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, I got all that stuff, Doc. Well, couldn't I trade that in for the flu or something? <laughs> Why do you want the flu? I want something I can write home and tell my mother I got. <laughs> flu I can spell. F-L-E-W. <laughs> I'll write it out for you. Here. And remember, this is no laughing matter, Mr. Harris. You're in bad shape. Unless you slow down and take things easy, I will not be responsible for the consequences. Wait. Is it that serious? I'm afraid it is, Mr. Harris. Well, gee whiz, I... I can't understand it. I... I thought I felt good when I came in here. Well, so long, Doc. How could this happen to anybody so fast? Gee, now my head feels hot and my hands feel cold and clammy and I'm breathing heavy. At least I'm breathing. <laughs> what did he say I had? Dorsum rotundum. Oh, I don't see how I'm even walking. This is awful. Hiya, Curly. 
Oh, hello, Frankie. Alice told me you were here and you... Charlie, what's wrong? Oh, Frankie, there's something I gotta tell you. You're looking at a man who has a case of dorsum rotundum. <laughs> a whole case? <laughs> Stuff, Frank. <laughs> Be serious, will you? And don't talk so loud. You're getting on my nerves. <laughs> I just wanted to see the doctor, and well, he put that that thing on my chest, and, and I'm a sick man, Frankie. I don't, Frankie. I don't look like a guy who's about to kick off, do I? I don't know, Curly. <laughs> you mean I look sick? Yeah, your face looks awful. You're pale and drawn. You got big bags under your eyes. Bags under my eyes? Are they noticeable? Not really. Just looks like your nose is wearing a saddle. English or cowboy? <laughs> More like a side saddle. You really got it. Man. I know I got it, but I wish I knew what I got. Well, for one thing, I can see you got too much iron in your blood. How do you know I got too much iron in my blood? It's obvious. Look at your hands. The ends of your fingers are breaking out in nails. <laughs> oh, Frankie, how can you joke at a time like this? You're supposed to be my pal. Comfort me. Say something to cheer me up. Just tell me that I'm not going to die. Tell me I'm not going to die. All right, I'll tell you. <laughs> but my heart won't be in it. <laughs> Oh, Remley, how can you be so callous? You're supposed to be a friend. You don't care what happens to me. That's not so, Curly. I don't like to get sentimental, but all I can say is, I wish I could go in your place. <laughs> yeah. Oh, gee, Frankie. That's awful sweet of you. And all I can say is, I wish you could, too. <laughs> Curly, I gotta get down to rehearsal now, but you better not go. I'll drive you home. Don't for bother. It. I'll walk down. I'm capable of walking home. Hope you make it. <laughs> so long, Curly. Gee, so young, too. <laughs> My pal, Frankie. I don't know what I'd do without him, but I'd sure like to try it. <laughs> well, I got a long walk. No, oh, maybe I better not walk with my condition. I'm sicker than I know. Now I've even got a quiver in my liver. And my head's starting to ache. There comes those cold hands again. Maybe I better ride home. Hey, ambulance, I need taxi. Hello, Mr. Harris. I heard you call that taxi. I'm going past your house. You want to lift to my delivery truck? Oh, hello, Julius. Yeah, I'd love a lift. Okay, jump in. Jump in in my condition? <laughs> Just open that door, kid, and let me crawl in there. <laughs> Beautiful day, hey, Mr. Harris? It's great to be alive, ain't it? I wouldn't know, Julius. <laughs> hey, I'm glad I met you. I got good news. Look, kid, before you say anything, I want you to know that you're looking at a man who isn't long for this world. Now, where do you hear my good news first? <laughs> Tomorrow I'm getting a $2 raise. That's life for you. He's going to get raised and I'm going to get lowered. <laughs> hey, what's the matter with you anyway, Mr. Harris? Look, Julius... I've just been to my doctor, and according to him, I'm on my last legs. And gee, if anything happens to me, Alice wouldn't have a man around to take her in his arms and comfort her. I wouldn't say that, Mr. Harris. <laughs> oh, look, Julius. Oh, gee, it's got me worried to death. I wonder if she'd ever get married again. Nah. <laughs> no, nah, she wouldn't, because I remember what she told me on our honeymoon. Hey, where did you and Miss Faye go on your honeymoon? Niagara Falls, why? Just check, and I wouldn't want to take her to the same place. <laughs> if I could lift my arm, I'd punch you right in the nose. Look, Julius, drive faster, will you? I feel worse every minute. I'm a little worried. Do you think maybe the doctor found something really wrong with Phil? Oh, nonsense, Alice. I'm positive there's nothing wrong with Philip. At least physically. 
<laughs> I guess it's silly of me to worry. I know there's nothing wrong with Phil. It's probably all in my imagination. It's just one of those things. Just one of those crazy things. One of those bells that now and then ring. Just one of those things. A trip to the moon on Gotham Road. Just one of those things. If we thought of it, I'll be end of it when we are in the car. We'd have been aware that our love affair was too hot not to cool down. So goodbye, goodbye, and amen. He's hoping we meet now and then. It was great. I'll let you know when he does. Hmm? All right, Mommy. Do you think the dog will pull through, Alice? Well, he's very old. I don't think he has much chance. I'm afraid when the vet calls, he's going to have bad news. I guess I should have told Phil about the dog, but I didn't want to upset him any more than he is. Oh, am I a sick man. I'm lucky I even made it home. Everything's beginning to hurt now. How can things happen so quickly? And how am I going to tell Alice? It's going to break her heart. I better sneak in the house and go upstairs until I think of some way to tell her. I hope Alice isn't around so I can... Oh, darn it, there's the phone. Now she'll come out here to answer it. And Well, I better hide in the dining room here till she's finished. Well, that's probably the doctor calling now, William. I'm anxious to find out how the poor old thing is. Hello. Oh, hello, doctor. I've been waiting for your call. Oh, why is the doctor calling her? Now it will come as a shock and she'll get hysterical. He's that bad, doctor? You think he's going to die? Oh, what a shame. <laughs> he tells her I'm going to die and all she can say is, oh, dear, what a shame. <laughs> you think a guy's wife would show more enthusiasm? Yes, that's true, doctor. He is getting pretty old, and he has outlived his usefulness. <laughs> pretty old. She ain't exactly no Margaret O'Brien herself. Well, the children will miss him, but I can always replace him. I've seen several in Beverly Hills that appeal to me. <laughs> several, yet one ain't enough. Oh, thank you, doctor, for all your trouble. As soon as I get another one, I'll bring him in for shots. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> William, the doctor said there's no hope for him. You know, the house will seem sort of empty without him. Oh, nonsense. He was never around anyway. He was always chasing all over town. <laughs> Why? I, I don't even think he appreciated the horse meat you cooked for him. <laughs> Horse meat? I thought she was just a bad cook. Well, just the same, I'm going to miss him. Well, frankly, I fail to understand how you ever tolerated him around the house. He was always lying around scratching himself with his hind leg. 
I suppose he thinks that's easy. <laughs> I've sort of become attached to him. I'll never forget the way he used to look up at me with that silly face and lick my hand. She was ain't nothing sacred to her. I can't believe it. Here I am about to die, and my wife doesn't even shed a tear. Just a pretty thing like me wilting in the flower of you. To think that Alice doesn't even care. It's just, I don't know what he's going to do with it. Who's that bobbing in there? <laughs> what? My Phil, it's you. Phil, what's wrong? What did the doctor say? No, as if you didn't know, you Jezebel, you. <laughs> I heard you talking to the doctor, and he no. said my days are numbered, and, and, and you didn't even care. You had... Oh, oh, Phil, that was the veterinarian I was talking to. The dog is sick. The dog? Oh, don't tell me we're both going together. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, that's all I need with everything else that's wrong with me. What do you mean? What's wrong with you, Phil? Yes, yes. What did the doctor say you had, Phil? Oh, I'm, I'm awful sick, William. I, I've got rhinos. I've got... <laughs> Well, wait a minute. Here's the whole list. Yes, let me see. <laughs> Alice, Alice, this is priceless. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Oh, oh, Philip, there's nothing wrong with you. All you have is dorsum rotundum, which means you're round-shouldered. Rhinogenous cephalalgia is a headache, and pityriasis capitis means dandruff. <laughs> now, how do you like it? <laughs> How do you like that? I thought I was dying, and all I got is round shoulders, headache with dandruff. <laughs> How can I have dandruff? I use Fitch. <laughs> Wait a minute. What's the idea of the doctor throwing a scare like that into oh, me? Oh, Phil, I'm sorry, but oh. it's my fault. I told the doctor to scare you a little so you'd take it easy. But, honey, you shouldn't have ought to done that. Well, maybe I shouldn't have ordered, but I've done it. <laughs> you to stop working so hard so you can spend more time at home with me. You like to be with me, don't you? Hmm. You know I do. Sure I do. Come here, baby. I want to take you in my arms and... Philip, I hope this has taught you a lesson. Oh, I got to set a trap for you, kid. <laughs> Get out of here, will you, Willie? We're busy. Now, go on. All right, all right. Philip, I hope, but I hope this scare, scare made you realize the importance of moderation. Or, as a Chinese philosopher once said, he who water rice fields too much wind up with just muddy fields and no rice. Thank you, Madam Chung Kai Shek, and get lost. <laughs> And Phil will be back in just a moment. America's number one hair problem is dandruff. Yes, according to a recent survey made by Cosmopolitan magazine, 61.5% of those interviewed said their number one hair problem is dandruff. But you can be free of this problem by using Fitch's dandruff remover shampoo regularly each week. When you see how completely Fitch shampoo removes dandruff with the first application, you'll be sure neither unsightly nor unseen dandruff is spoiling your personal appearance. Yes, be free of all traces of dandruff with Fitch shampoo. For Fitch is the one and only shampoo made whose guarantee to remove dandruff with the first application is backed by one of the world's largest insurance firms. It's easy to use, and it leaves your scalp tingling with that grand clean feeling. Buy an economical bottle at drug or toilet goods counters or have professional applications of Fitch's dandruff remover shampoo at beauty or barber shop. Fitch is... This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.